Hello and welcome to your 33rd SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you guys about paging data. Specifically how to write a paging query. So, okay, I have a little example here. And First, I'm going to begin by giving a brief explanation here. A uh, little background info. A common request for application functionality is paging data. Instead of having the entire result returned, it's often preferable to have a short list broken down by a page and some other or some number of rows. Before SQL Server 2012 came out, developers and DBAs could use several different techniques to simulate paging, but with SQL Server 2012, we now have true native database side paging, which is pretty cool. SQL Server 2012 introduces a keyword coupling that provides an elegant and efficient paging solution. Using offset and fetch, you can write a single query that returns data one page at a time to a client application or to an end user. So as you see right here, offset. Offset denotes how many rows to skip before the query starts returning rows. And then fetch specifies how many rows to return after offset has been processed. Offset is synonymous with the page number and fetch with the number of rows that will be displayed per page. Both offset and fetch have a few additional arguments that must be included in the syntax. And right here is a little example of the syntax for writing a paging query. Um, with offset, you can provide an integer value or an expression that specifies the starting row. You must also include the rows keyword. Fetch requires the next keyword, an integer or expression that specifies the number of rows to return, and the rows keyword. Okay, so now that I've shown you this little example, let's go ahead and write a page query, shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay, so... I want to go grab this bit of code right here. Paste this in. Go ahead and copy that down. Okay. Oh, I'm not even connected yet. Hang on. Okay. Should be good to go. Let's see. Oh, I've got this pulled down, pull up. Okay, now, an additional and probably the most important thing, most important requirement is that this pair must be preceded by an order by clause. You see the order by there? The column specified in the order by clause determines the order and what rows will be returned. The query uh, is modified slightly so that instead of starting as the first row the offset is changed to 10 okay so that's not this query starts with one now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the other example get rid of that so. see as you can see here offset 0 rows offset 10 rows now let's check it out Okay, when offset is changed, notice that a new set of products is returned. Okay, now go ahead and look at all these. I didn't point that out, so I'll go ahead and show you the first example again. Take a look. Now I want this. Now I want this guy again. Right. Yep. See? Notice we have a different set of products. So, pretty cool. You now know how to write a page query using T-SQL. Thanks for stopping by. In my next tutorial, I believe I'll be covering how to write a query with constant expression. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, wait. And one thing to note. I believe in this first example I said it starts with one. I meant zero. This one starts 
with zero rows, not one. And again, we can see the second right here offsets ten rows. So zero rows, ten rows, yields different products. You now know how to write a page and query. See it in the next tutorial, this time for real.